Good day and welcome, I am Drake598Gaming with a Space Hulk Deathwing tutorial. Uh, today's tutorial is basically going to be a combat tips and tricks video, uh, just focusing on combat and how to improve your gameplay in the actual match. A lot of what I'm going to go through in this video is going to be basic to a lot of other shooter games, uh, but my first recommendation is going to be move fast and work towards your objectives, don't get bogged down by too many enemies. Especially in the opener, like here, it can be really good. Um, you'll see I'll trigger the next part on the minimap on the right hand side, and then I'm going to sprint up to the door. That minimizes the chances that you're going to get enemies spawn in that room. Always focus fire your targets, and alternate between your gun and your melee. You'll see as I'm falling back here through the breakable wall, I am focusing down the Scythe Strain first and then taking out the Warrior Strain as the Warrior Strain are a bit more tanky and the Scythe Strain deals a lot more damage. So always focusing those down. Remember to use your terrain to your advantage um, when interacting with turrets and things like that. You can stop a lot of the bullets, like you can see how that pole is now stopping the rounds from that. Remember you can use your scope to highlight organic or hidden enemies. You can always perform other op Actions while locking doors. Remember you can kneecap enemies to slow them down and then follow up with a headshot. It is just an easier way to continue backing away. Remember to watch out for the invisible eyes of the scythe strain, like there. And remember it, a lot of terrain is interactable so that you can destroy barrels or walls and things like that. Be aware there's a lot of hidden pop-up points um, that will sometimes sprout gunners. Uh, you'll hear a sound before they actually open. the advantage to unlocking the door while you're still guarding your own back. And again, reloading, performing other actions while the door unlocks. There's the eyes from the scythe strain, so a knee shot him, slow it down, run up here, sit behind this pole so that the gun is going to be shooting the pole instead of us. advantage to using terrain and you can preemptively lock doors in some cases uh, like I'm going down here now to lock this door and that will funnel all the enemies from this one direction so that when I run up here and cross to the other door all the enemies have to come out of this one tunnel now so I've essentially protected my flanks In some cases it can good, be good to preemptively unlock a door, like I know once I trigger um, that objective that will I will have to fall up. back to this position, and so I have unlocked the door first. For solo is not necessarily going to reflect your equipment for co-op. Always better to sidestep than block. Um, Blocking will still deal damage to your arm, unless it's one of those, or it's shooters. Backing away can also work, just let them miss their attack or sidestep. You'll see what works. Remember with all classes you do have two arms. So in this instance I have a left and a right, well that's obvious, but the sword and the shield. 
they sort of alternate um, in a lot of classes. You can get away with doing that and it will maximise your damage. Uh, like with the Apothecary using the shotgun, then the Narceptium, and then back to the shotgun. So this is why I said at the opener, know your classes and what works for you on what map. Because all the maps are different. They all have different objectives. So for instance, I prefer this as an opener on this map, just so I can deal with the group or fairly easily. It makes it harder to deal with the doors that are up there. But I do have this as the backup. And then you can sort of feel free to swap to whatever class you'd like once the portal opens. Remember you can only ever enter a portal once as well. The way to get around that is turn codex rules off while playing and then you can change class by just hitting the touchpad. Sometimes it can be in your best interest to go slow. Like now, I'm going to wait for this objective to come to me. It'll make it much easier to deal with. And then you can just lock the door and you have nothing to worry about. Load. You can see I'm dodging there. Okay. Increase my damage output just a little bit. And then I'm going to try to take care of this guy. It can be really good to know your terrain. Like now, I have the Broodlord where he cannot actually get to me. Um, you can use doorways as well. Uh, you can use boxes and crates, although that is much harder. Uh, anywhere where you can get so that the Broodlord can't actually get to you is going to be of more benefit. But that being said... Without the firepower to actually kill them, sometimes it can be best just to avoid them. So we'll see if we can get him coming towards me. Yep. Always watch out for that lightning. And that's why it's more dangerous to be doing it like this, running around the objective. But it will. Because we've got him more or less in a position where he can't actually strike us, so we can finish him off. Remember you will be able to use terrain in your favour. Like, I will be able to shoot a lot of pipes and have them burst on fire which will increase damage output on the enemy quite a bit. They normally only burn once so you've got to work your way down a trail of pipes or something like that, like these will not burn again. Always focus on your enemies that you need to focus, then you worry about the, all the little guys. Always remember to watch out at vents. It's a quick and easy way to dispatch enemies before they even notice. And having that controller sensitivity turns up just allows you to spin it and pivot on the spot a lot easier. So remembering to know your objectives, know what you're actually looking to here to kill, and focus that always. Then worry about any secondary objectives you might happen to notice. Go 
Um, so this is a, basically a demonstration of one of the three classes running through the same hard difficulty section. In the case of the Apothecary, discretion being the better part of Valor. around this and still close should give us plenty of time uh, second example being how a devastator or heavy weapon specialist will deal with the same room being what most people would consider one of the hardest rooms in the game on the hardest difficulty All right, now he's done you can deal with the rest Thank you very much for watching, I've been Drake598Gaming, if you did find this video helpful consider dropping a like or subscribing to the channel, it always helps it grow, and I'll catch you all next time.